Hey, it's a good day to be at church, amen? Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so glad you're here. Turn to the neighbor you just ignored and say, I'm glad you're here too. Maybe not as glad, but I'm still glad you're here. Man, it's a good day to be at church. Can you believe summer is coming to a close? I know it doesn't feel like it because it's like 138 degrees outside this week, but it's coming to a close. School is starting this week. It's a big week at my house uh, as we are starting kindergarten this year at the Hill House, and it is crazy. So we're trying to get all the, all the summer things in. We went to the fair, and I found that I don't really care to go to the fair. I like to serve at the fair, and then I'm done with the fair, especially when I got kids that just want all the food, and my pockets get empty really quick when I'm at the fair. But we were going to the fair. We were going and doing all the fun stuff, going swimming, went to the lake, and there was a special thing that happened. I have a picture. My oldest son, Barrett, went tubing for the first time by himself this week. So that was a fun, exciting thing that happened at my house. If you don't know me, uh, I'm Pastor Zach. This is uh, my oldest son, Barrett. I think there's another picture of my family in there. This is my family. You'll see all of them around. If we have not met, uh, this is me meeting you. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Pastor Zach. This is my wife, Marin, you'll see her leading worship pretty often. She leads in the contemporary service, and Barrett's our oldest. Wells is the one standing up right there. Uh, pray for him. We're praying that he gets saved really soon. Uh, he needs Jesus. And then there's the baby Hank right there, and he is the happiest little kid that you will see. But that is my family, and they are growing, and it's, we love being a part of New Hope. It's a good place to be, Amen. It's a good family to be a part of. Well, we're about to jump in today. If you have your Bible, go ahead, come on, go ahead and turn to Genesis chapter 26. There it is. We get excited about reading the Word of God at New Hope, and if you're taking notes this morning, the title is Keep Digging. Keep Digging. Turn your hand and say, Keep Digging. Keep Digging. Dig. And as you turn to Genesis 26, let me take a moment to invite you tonight back to service at 6 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. Pastor Weaver asked me to give a special announcement. He said there are certain people, especially in this service, I think you said, that, that, keep, that keep bugging him, saying, oh, we miss your preaching. Oh, we miss seeing your bald head on stage. Oh, we miss you yelling at us. Oh, we miss... He said he's, he's got a lot of feedback that people miss him preaching. So he is preaching tonight. Turn here and say tonight. 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 And he said, if all of you that keep telling him that you miss him preaching don't show up, he won't believe you anymore. He thinks you're a liar. So 6 p.m. tonight, come back to service. It's going to be good. But we're in Genesis chapter 26 as we have continued going through the book of Genesis. And here in Genesis chapter 26, we're going to hear about a guy named Isaac. Say Isaac. Isaac, and we see Isaac a little bit in other places, but not much. We see Isaac is the son to Abraham. He's, he's the promised one to Abraham and Sarah, and we see him in that little bit. We see that he's the one that Abraham takes up to sacrifice. God, God has this test for Abraham, and you can only imagine the trauma that would come to a child being laid on the altar, being prepared to sacrifice, but here he is. It's Isaac. We see him a little bit with Jacob and, and Esau, but here in Genesis chapter 26, is where we see Isaac the most. This is kind of the main chapter that we see this guy named Isaac. Say Isaac. Isaac. And here in Genesis 26, it starts off, and as we begin this chapter, it kind of feels a little bit like deja vu. Like, have we read this before? Haven't we, haven't we preached this before? And what we see is Isaac is about to repeat a sin that Abraham was doing. A sin that that his father was doing. And, and you know, we've talked before about how it's not this generational curse, but there's generational sin. And I want to, to encourage you today, the parents and the grandparents in the room, that you have children and grandchildren who are watching you. That they are watching, and what we do in moderation, they will do in abundance. They, they, they will exceed that. And we need to be very careful what we do. We need to be very careful what we say, how we act, how we respond, because they are watching. So Isaac, he goes into this, this new land, and he's with his wife, and they say, hey, is this your wife? And you know what he says? It's my sister. Remember this from before? This has happened before. It feels like deja vu. He says, no, 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 this is my sister. He's afraid if they know she's my wife, they're going to kill me so that they can have her. So he lies, and he says, this is my sister. And then one day, King Abimelech is, is looking out his window, and he goes, oh, there's Isaac. Oh, that's his si 
What is Isaac and his sister? That is not a thing a brother and a sister would do. That is dis- Listen to what it says in, in verse 8. Genesis 26, verse 8. It says, when Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. If you don't know what caressing means, ask your mom after service. <laughs> but we see King Abimelech, he's looking down, he thinks he's seeing a brother and sister, and he goes, okay, stop. Either you lied to me and that's your wife, or you're weird. Either way, stop, okay? Either way, cut it out. Stop, stop doing what you're doing. He's like, this is not okay. He realizes you lied to me. What is Isaac doing? He's repeating what his father did before him. He watched his father do this, now, now I'm doing this. Remember, parents, we need to be very wise with what we do. Grandparents, very wise with how we act, with what we say. He says, okay, I, I, need, you, I need you to go. I, I need you to stop doing what you're doing, and, 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 and you guys just, just go back being together. And then jump down to, to verse 12. It says, Isaac then planted crops in that land, and the same year reaped a hundredfold. Say a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich. His wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up, filling them with the earth. This says that he planted crops, he planted seeds, and harvested a hundred times what he had planted. A hundred times what he had planted. Now notice with his neighbors, this is the same rain that his neighbors are getting. This is the same sun that his neighbors are getting. This is the same soil that his neighbors have. Yet he is getting a hundred times. A hundred times what he planted. Why? Why is Isaac getting a hundred times what he had planted? Here it is, because God is faithful. God is faithful. Go back to verse one. I know we're kind of jumping back and forth through 26, but I have a plan. Go to verse one. It says, now there was a famine in the land beside the pre- besides the previous famine in Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. For to you and your descendants, I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because Abraham obeyed me, did everything I required of him, keeping my commands, my decrees, and my instructions. God is faithful. It says because Abraham obeyed. Say obey. Abraham obeyed. Abraham obeyed what God told him And therefore, God was faithful. God blessed him, and he blessed generations to come. I want you to see that many times we think that this blessing from God, it can just be kind of this random thing where you randomly get blessed. But what I see here is it's this two parts. It's Abraham obeyed, and then God was faithful. It's I need to obey God, and God's going to be faithful, and then that's where the blessing comes. It's, it's being obedient, and then God does his part of being faithful. Are you thankful this morning, church, that we serve a God who is faithful? A God who is clear. It's very clear in his word what we are to do. He's very clear when he speaks to us what we are to do. And when we obey and when we do what he says to do, he is faithful. And he pours out blessings. And that's what we see here. He, he has a hundredfold, a, a hundred times what, what he planted, he gets back in return. And we see that many times we think that because somebody's blessed, that everything's gonna be easy. Oh, you're, you're, you're blessed. That means life just gets easy for you. Oh, you know, if I say yes to Jesus, everything gets easy. Anybody in the room know that when you say yes to Jesus, that doesn't mean life gets easier? It's not the easiest life, but I can tell you what, it's the best life. It's the best life, and and we see Isaac, he gets blessed, but problems begin to happen. The Philistines, they get envious, they get jealous. They go and they they fill up the wells of Abraham, they they stop the flow of the water. They tell him, you've got to get out of here. Jump to verse 16, it says, then Abimelech said to Isaac, move away from us, you've become too powerful for us. What a blessing that God made him too powerful. Too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar where he settled. 
Verse 18 says, Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died. And he gave them the same names his father had given them. It says, Isaac reopened the wells, the wells that Abraham had dug, the wells that were meant to refresh, the wells that were meant to have clean water, the wells that were meant for Isaac and for, for generations to come. He had to dig them out. You know, maybe, maybe we just need to, to talk through for a moment what the well is, a, a water well. I think most of us have a good idea of what a water well is, right? It goes deep down into the earth to get water. And what we find is that many times to get water, you have to go very far down. And I felt like God was telling me to encourage somebody in here today that maybe today you came in and you feel like you're far down. You feel like you're buried down, like you're deep, like, like it just can't get any worse than this, that it, you just can't get any lower than this. But can I encourage you this morning that deep down is where the water is. That you might feel like I'm buried, you might feel like I can't get out of this hole, but there is the water. And today I'm not just talking about physical water, but I'm talking about the living water. In John chapter four, Jesus comes to a well. And there's a woman that shows up and Jesus says, hey, can you get me a drink? She says, how can I get you a drink? You don't have a bucket. Jesus says, you don't need a bucket when you are the well. I am the living water. If you drink what I wanna give you, you will never thirst again. Maybe you came in today and you feel buried down, you feel deep, let me tell you, there is a living water that you can drink from that will mean that you never thirst again. There's a well. We're gonna keep digging a well, keep digging down to get to the living water. Wells at this time, they, they were a big deal. They were very important. No, they didn't have the technology that we have today to just go in and dig a quick well. This would have taken a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of time. This would have been a big investment. When you think of the, the location of this in the middle of the desert, water would be very valuable. And if you had the resources to dig a water well and, and to actually hit the water, this would, this would be a, a wealth thing for you. It'd be like today you, you get an oil well and you, you have all this oil, that, that's what the water well would have been. And when Abraham, when he digs this well, he's not just digging this well for himself, he dug it for Isaac and he dug it for generations to come. Proverbs 13, 22 says a, a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children. It could be said that a good church leaves an inheritance for their children's children. I don't know about you, but I wanna leave a legacy for my children's children. For, for generations to come, I wanna leave an inheritance. If you're looking for a church to leave an inheritance for your children's children and their children and their children, can I tell you New Hope's a good spot? New Hope's a, a spot that, that you can say, I'm gonna dig deep in this well because there is water that is flowing here that I want my children to come to, that I want my grandchildren to come to, that I want my, my great-grandchildren to come to. This is a good well, I, I wanna invest into this well. It doesn't take long of being at New Hope to find that New Hope really invests into the next generation. New Hope, it's a multi-generational church. You look around, you find that we are very multi-generational, that there are all sorts of generations that come to New Hope. But what we find is that at New Hope that we invest a lot into the next generation. You, it doesn't take long of hearing the announcements this morning to hear that there's a lot happening for kids and youth. It doesn't take long of going on a tour around the New Hope facilities to walk into the, the new kids facility and see the gym and to see a slide that takes you from one level of the building to another to say, yeah, there was some investment that was put into the children here. It doesn't take long of walking across the street to our student campus and you find, while the youth building is a lot nicer than most churches have for their whole building, there's some investment that went into the next generation. New Hope invests into the next generation. Why? Because we believe that this is a well that we wanna dig for our children and our children's children. And can I tell you that if you're looking for a place to leave a legacy, if you're looking for a place to leave an investment, this is a good place to invest in. This is a place that, 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 you can, that you can dig deep into and leave it for your child. I think of all the people who have dug deep for New Hope. You know, I think went back to when there was the red sanctuary and, and then it grew to the green sanctuary. If you don't know New Hope very well, we just call every sanctuary by the color of the carpet that it was. <laughs> there was the green sanctuary and I remember being in that sanctuary and 
building the, stu- the original student campus, the, the chapel and, and the gym, and, and then building this building and building the building we just got into in the last year. And I think of all the people who said, I wanna make an investment for my children and my children's children. I think of the people who maybe in the green sanctuary they gave to see this built. And maybe they gave and they were never able to even see this. Maybe they died before that time, but they recognized, I wanna leave my legacy. I want my children to have water that they can go to. I want my, my children's children to have a, a well where the, the water is running. I'm gonna keep digging in this well so that my children's children have water to go to. If you're looking for a place to leave a legacy, this is a place that you can invest in your children's children. We see Abraham, he, he digs this well and it's, it's for his children and his children's children. It's, it's for all these generations to come. And then it tells us that when Abraham died, the Philistines filled in the wells. They stopped the water that they took dirt and they, they filled it. It says they took the earth and filled it in. I wonder if the Philistines had this thought. Okay, we need to wait for Abraham to die before we fill in the well. Because Abraham, he knows what went into that well. Abraham, he, he knows the investment, he knows the effort, he knows the time that it took to build, he knows what that well is worth, he knows how good that well is. We need to wait for him because as kids, they don't understand how good the well is. They won't fight for it like Abraham did, and so what we'll do is we'll just wait for Abraham to die, and then we'll fill it in, and then we'll just dry out the generations to come. I think this is what Satan tries to do. That he looks, the grandparents... And the parents, and he thinks, once they die out, then I'm gonna fill in that well. Then I'm just gonna start to dry out generations. So once, once they die out, I'm gonna start to scoop some dirt in. I'm gonna start to dirty up the worship. I'm gonna scoop some dirt in. I'm gonna start to dirty up the doctrine. Start to dirty up the truth. Start to dirty up holiness. Once they're gone, they're not gonna fight for it. The, the kids aren't gonna fight for it like the parents would or the grandparents would, so I'm just gonna start to dirty it up. I'm gonna start to, to fill it up. Then this is what Satan wants to do is he wants to come into your family as generations pass and he wants to start to fill in the dirt. That's why today we need to be people like Isaac who go back to a well and say, I'm gonna keep on digging. I'm gonna dig this well. I know that there's water in this well. I'm gonna dig, I'm gonna dig the dirt out. And it's not just a one time I dig this and it's done, but it's a continual dig. There's constantly dirt that's falling in and I'm saying I'm gonna constantly be in this well getting the dirt out. Because I want fresh water. So I want clean water. I want the living water. I'm gonna keep on digging. You know, I notice when Isaac goes back to this well, there's a, a couple things that, that happen. He, he shows up to the well. He shows up to that well and, and he decides, I'm, a, I'm gonna dig this well out. I, I'm, I'm gonna come back to this well. And I, I start to think he, he left that land and he goes back to the well, which tells me that Isaac knew exactly where that well was. And he knew exactly what name his father had named it, which would tell me this, that Abraham took Isaac to that well often. I imagine all the trips that Abraham and Isaac had where where Isaac knew it was just like burned into his mind how I get to that well. I know exactly where I'm going to get to that well. I know the exact path to get back to that well. I know the exact name. I think of all the, 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 the trips that they took to the well. I think of all the conversations that they had. I think of all the times that Abraham said, now let me tell you this story about when we dug this well. And Isaac going, dad, I've heard this story a million times. Now, did you know that this well is named this? Dad, I know you've, you've told me this over and over. I think of all the times that he told him, but what we see is that he knew the well. Can I tell you and can I encourage you this morning that as we're going on our, our walk with Christ, as we're on this, this faith journey, that our walk, it should be public for our family. That they know, they, they know what it looks like to worship. They know what the well of worship looks like. They know what the well of fasting looks like. They know what the well of serving looks like. They know what the well of sacrifice looks like. They know what the well of holiness looks like. They know the well. Can we be people who say, I'm gonna make sure that that my children, that my grandchildren, that the people around me, that they know the well that I am digging. That it is so clear that Isaac, he, he knew the well and he knew it very well. 
I know exactly how to get there and I know what it's named. We see that he shows up and he knows it. He also shows up and he doesn't rename it. He keeps the same name that Abraham named it, which tells us a couple things. One, there's honor there. He's honoring his father by keeping the same name. Two, tells us that he didn't need to rename it. Meaning that the name that Abraham named it was good enough then, so it's good enough now. Can I tell you something? That there are certain things that we do not need to rename. The world might tell us, hey, you need to rename that. The world might try to rename something. They might say, hey, it's not politically correct for you to say that. You need to change that name around. But can I tell you that there are certain things we don't need to rename? We don't need to rename what repentance is. We don't need to rename what holiness is. We don't need to rename what baptism is. We don't need to rename what power of the Holy Spirit is. We don't need to rename what sin is. We don't need to rename where we're gonna spend eternity, either heaven or hell. I don't need to rename hell to make it nicer so, for, so people don't get offended. No, it is hell. And the reality is, is to, to die a sinner, eternity is in hell. The world might say, ah, you should rename that. You should change the name, you should make that, that seems kind of harsh, but really that might feel to some like I hate you by telling you that, but really that's an act of love. That I love you so much to tell you that if something doesn't change, that's the reality of eternity. I don't need to rename hell. I don't need to rename sin. Can I tell you that as New Hope continues to grow, can I tell you that as generations continue to come through that there are things that we are not gonna rename and if this word of God says it, we're gonna preach it. If the word of God says it, I'm gonna keep on digging that well. I'm gonna keep digging whatever it is that this is, I'm gonna keep digging in. And I'm not gonna allow, as Satan tries to kick more dirt in, as he tries to dirty the water, I'm gonna be in that well and I'm gonna make a decision. I'm in the well with my shovel and I'm getting the dirt out. It's a constant act. I'm constantly getting this dirt out. And today I wanna just share with you a couple things, a couple wells that I feel like we need to continue digging. And I'm gonna share a couple that I just felt like the Holy Spirit tell me to share this morning. But what I believe this morning is that as I share these couple of things that the Holy Spirit's gonna speak to you and there's gonna be wells that you're gonna make a decision that I'm gonna keep on digging. Some wells that maybe for the first time you're gonna start digging. Maybe some wells that generations before you dug that, that you've allowed to be filled in, and you're gonna go back to those wells, and you're gonna say, I'm gonna start digging these, these wells out. And here in just a few moments, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to respond, a response that I think is for every single person. Whether this is your first time ever coming to church, or maybe you've been in church every Sunday for the last 85 years, and you've said yes to Jesus every single day of your life, I think this is a, a message that we respond to, say, I'm gonna keep on digging. I'm gonna dig for myself, I'm gonna dig for my, my family, I'm gonna dig for my children, I'm gonna dig for my children's children, I'm gonna dig this well. There's three wells that I wanna give you today, but like I said, the Holy Spirit might be speaking to you for some other wells. And the first well that I think we need to keep on digging today is the well of fasting. We need to redig a well of fasting. What is fasting? It's, it's giving up food, it's it's giving up something to, to seek after God. Fasting, it's, it's hungering for God. Fasting, it's, it's going on a food strike against hell. Fasting is something that I believe that we need to, to either start digging for some, start re-digging for some, or, or continue to stay in the well and continue digging that well out, continue getting the dirt out. I believe that New Hope is on the edge of something. We see all the time on Sundays, we see miracles happen, we see healings happen, we see lost people come to know Jesus, but I believe that our city is ripe for revival right now. I believe that, that this city, that your workplace, that your school for students going back this week, what a day to start revival in your school, first day of school. You walk in and miracles begin happening. We're, we're on the edge, but what we see is that fasting, it does something. It does something for the individual person. It does something for a church. It begins to stir up something. It lines us up with the word of God. It allows God to speak to us. It allows God to speak through us. And I wrote down a few things that if you have your phone, you can take a picture, but here's a few things that I believe fasting does. Blake, he put that up. Fasting causes us to seek and see vertical solutions for horizontal situations. Fasting, it fast tracks your prayers. 
Fasting will release God's power and bring about supernatural results. Fasting will bring divine wisdom to life's problems. I don't know about you, but I need wisdom. There's things that I can't figure out. I need, I need wisdom. Fasting humbles your heart and gives you a new awareness of God's purpose in your life. Fasting will give you favor among people. And fasting will bring heaven's answers and hell's defeats. Fasting makes a big difference. Fasting is a, a well that I believe that we need to be in and we need to continue to dig out. And maybe you've never fasted before, or maybe you've done it a lot, but I believe that this is something that you should start doing or you should continue doing. I believe this is where breakthrough happens. You know, Pastor Weaver, as, as we were talking this week, and he was just telling me that before he started New Hope, that he spent four days of just, of just fasting and praying. And, and in those four days is when God revealed to him many of the, the foundational things that we still stick to here at New Hope today. But what he told me is that the fasting that happened then can't be the only fasting that happens. That's a well that we have to stay in. That's a well that we need to continue digging out. That's a well that Satan is always gonna try to push dirt in and, and dirty up the waters. And that's a well that I've gotta stay in and I've gotta make sure that my shovel is constantly getting the dirt out. That I'm constantly in that water, in that, that clean water of fasting. Fasting, it's, it's hungering for God. You know what well we need to dig out? is a well of hungering after God. When was the last time that you just got so stuck in the presence of God that you said, I'm not gonna leave this place? The last time that you just responded, that, that you just worshiped without a band, that, that you just said, I, I don't need anything else. My focus isn't on anything or anybody else. My focus is, I just want more of God. I just wanna be lost in your presence. Can we redig a well of hungering after God, of wanting more of God? I remember times being back in the green sanctuary that's now our auditorium. And I remember Sunday nights as a kid and just feeling like sometimes I felt like this is taking hours. This goes on forever. And I, I, I do remember many times being in the back row back in that area of that old sanctuary and falling asleep as a kid during the altar time and waking up. And those are the best naps ever. If you've never taken a nap during an altar call where the Holy Spirit is just there and present, those are the best naps. But I just remember times just the altars being opened and just rooms full of people just hungering after God. Just digging a well of, of relationship with God. Digging a well saying, I, I want more of this. I, I want to get the dirt. I, I want to dig this well for my kids, for my grandkids, for my great grand. I, I need to dig this well. When was the last time you dug out the well of hungering for God, of lingering in his presence? We expect the world to respond when, when we present Jesus. How are you responding when he's in the room? It's a hungering for God. I want more of you, God. The next well that I think we need to dig out is the, the well of holiness. In Hebrews it says, work at living at peace with one another. Work at living a holy life for those who are not holy will not see the Lord. I don't know about you, but I wanna see the Lord. I wanna see him move in my life, in my family's life. I wanna see him move in this church. And if we do not practice digging out the well of holiness, we will not see God. We need to get back to holiness. Back to saying, my focus is on you. Can I just ask you a couple questions? Not, not to condemn you, but just for you to really think about right now. Is your focus more on things of this earth or is your focus more on God? So something that I felt like God revealed to me this week and a question that I wanna ask you over the last year. Have you added more to the list of convictions or more to the list of compromise? I think many times, especially as we walk through life as, as we grow in our walk with Christ, we, we get to these points where we think, you know, I'm strong enough in my faith. I can do that now. I can go there and it won't affect me. 
I can watch that, it's not gonna bother me. I can listen to this and it's not gonna be, I, I, I can do this and, it, and it's not gonna be, it's not that big of a deal. I, I'm strong enough in my faith, but have you added more to your list of convictions or more to your list of compromise? Because if we're striving for holiness, that list of convictions should be growing and growing and growing. That the list of compromise, it's, it's I, I don't do any of that stuff. That's, that's God. I, I don't think I'm holy enough that I can handle it. No, I'm holy enough that I'm staying away from that stuff. Let's add to our list of convictions. Let's, let's work at living a holy life. Let's redig the well of holiness. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the dirt that's in that well so that we can remove it. So we see that there's, there's a few wells and, and like I said, maybe the Holy Spirit's revealing some to you right now. But the, the last well that I want to talk about this morning, we see the well of fasting, we see the well of holiness and the last well is the well of faith. Let me ask you this morning, how is your well of faith? How do you clean out that well of faith? How do we have a clean well of faith? We, we get into the well, we get our shovel out, and we begin digging out the unbelief. We begin digging out the doubt. We begin declaring, God, I believe I will be healed. God, I believe I'll see miracles happen. God, I believe that my, my children and my grandchildren, that they're far from you right now, but they're gonna come to know you. We, we, we start to dig that, we start to dig down deeper. I think of, I think of Lazarus, when Lazarus dies and, and he's in the tomb and his sisters and his family, they, they buried him and they buried their faith with it. He's dead, he's gone, and I think maybe there's some here today and you've buried your faith. You've buried your faith because you said, my, my children, my grandchildren, they're, they're spiritually dead and they're in the tomb and my faith is there with them. They're gone, they, they don't come to church anymore. They don't talk about God and they don't even have a Bible anymore. And your faith is gone. But today I declare that we get into the well and we begin digging our faith back out. We begin getting the doubt out of the well, the unbelief out of the well. We begin to declare, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We dig out the well of faith. We declare, God, I believe. Say, I believe. Come on, say, I believe. God, I believe you can do it. I believe I'll see. I don't, I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. I'm gonna see it happen. It's not what I see right now, that's all blurry. I, 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 it doesn't matter right now what I'm seeing, I'm gonna see it happen later. I'm walking by faith. Would you stand with me all across the room this morning? We're redigging wells. We're digging wells of, of faith, of holiness, of fasting, of, of prayer, of devotion, of scripture, of serving. We're redigging wells of sacrifice, of hungering for God of a prayer life, we're, we're digging wells so that our children and our children's children have a well to go to. We're digging wells because we know that at the bottom of that well, there is running water, there is living water, there is clean water. We're declaring that today, I'm gonna dig some wells for the first time. Today, I'm gonna redig some wells. Today, I'm declaring I'm staying in the well and I'm digging the dirt out. With every head bowed and every eyes closed, I, I believe that there are some here today for the first time ever, you want to dig a well of salvation. You want to get a well that takes you straight to the living water, to Jesus who changes everything. You want to taste the water so that, so that you will never thirst again. Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus, but today you want to declare, today I surrender, today I release control and I surrender to God, giving my life to Him. Saying yes, following Him, saying I will spend eternity in heaven with you that's you maybe digging the well for the first time or maybe re-digging a well would you just raise your hand saying that's me I give my life to Jesus today I'm surrendering today digging the well of salvation go into the living water yes yes I see your hand God I thank you for the hands that went up saying yes to you the best decision we could ever make the hands that went up saying yes to the living water saying yes I'm going to begin to dig this well Yes, I'm going to begin to be connected to the source that is Jesus. We thank you for those hands. 
Come on, all across the room right now, just begin to ask Holy Spirit, what is the well that I need to dig? What is the well that I need to redig? God, give me strength to stay in the well and keep digging. We're digging. Come on, keep digging. I'm not going to allow a generation to pass. In Judges chapter 2, it says, A generation passed and the next generation grew up, did not know the Lord or what he had done for them. What a scary verse, but today we're declaring, I'm going to be an Isaac that makes sure that generations to come, they know what this well is like. I'm going to keep on digging. I'm digging this well. If that's you today, I'm going to pray. And when I say amen, if you want to make a decision, I'm going to keep digging. Maybe you want to make a decision that I'm going to begin hungering after God today. You want to make a decision, I'm going to start digging the well of fasting, of holiness, of faith, of gratitude, of serving, of sacrifice. He's speaking to you right now to to dig a well. Today we're we're going to respond saying, I'm going to start digging. We're going to come forward as an outward expression of an inward decision. Say, God, I'm going to keep on digging. God, I thank you for every person in this room, for every person that you brought here, that there's not one person that is here by accident this morning, but you brought them here this morning on purpose. God, I pray this morning that our wells would be clean wells. I pray this morning that we would not have to go redig wells in the future, but the wells would be dug out, that they would be clean, that we'd be connected to the living water. For those in the room today who are feeling like starting yes, a fast, yes, for those in the room today who are going to begin a yes, prayer life, who are going to begin doing oh, devotions for the first time, God, that that well would begin to be dug right now. For those in the room who are going to begin searching after holiness, for those who are going to begin having a hunger for you, God, I pray for faith to rise up in the room this morning. For the parent, the grandparent who is here by themselves, God, they have faith for the, their children, for their family to be saved, for their friends to be saved. God, we start digging the well of faith today. We respond to you, say, yes, God, I will keep on digging. I will follow you. I will be obedient like Abraham was obedient. God, we worship you. We surrender to you this morning. Hear me pray. Amen. If that's